You can be the moral arbiter on this one, Birmingham. Right? You be the moral arbiter on this one this evening. I've got a friend, he got dumped by his girlfriend. She ended their relationship just because he said something. They were, they were making love, they were mid-coitus. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> as he orgasmed, as he, as he, as he arrived, <laughs> ejaculated, came. The most intimate, but also the most vulnerable time for a man, as, as that occurred, as he... He said, bang, and the dirt is gone. <laughs> I can see two distinct groups of men. There's some men looking at me as if to say, I don't think that's that bad. <laughs> I think maybe she's overreacted a little bit. And then I can see other men looking at me as if to say, note to self. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be very careful with jokes in the bedroom, because it's quite funny to say to a girl who's sucking you off, it's rude to talk with your mouth full. <laughs> but it's even funnier if she says, well, it's not full. <laughs> Are there any couples in this evening? Give us a shout, the couples. Yay! Oh, lots of couples in tonight. This is a bit silly, I think, uh, but for Valentine's, I got my girlfriend sex vouchers as her present. <laughs> I didn't realise they were transferable. <laughs> Turns out they accept them at her work. <laughs> you get to the stage in a long-term relationship where you want to experiment sexually, but, you know, it can be awkward. And what if she finds out? I'm 10 years into a relationship now. Anyone beat that? Anyone longer than 10 years? Yes. What's the longest we've got in the room? 13. Th 13? 26. 26. Anyone more than 26? 28? More than 28? How, how long? For, sorry? You, you've, been you've been together for 43 years? I think. Come on, 43 years. Now, I obviously... I don't know what it's like after 43 years. I think that's an extraordinary commitment, especially in this day and age. That is quite something. But I don't know if it's the same for you, because I've only been together with my girl for 10 years, but things have got quite predictable in the bedroom. Now, when I lower my entire ball bag into her mouth, <laughs> she is pretty much guaranteed to wake up. <laughs> same? Oh, you couldn't see that, he just went, yeah, same. <laughs> you look worried on their behalf, they've been married 43 years, don't panic, they've tried everything. <laughs> Who, what's your relationship with them? What, how do you know them? That's your mum and dad. Oh. <laughs> That's nice. Well, I hope the image of your dad teabagging your mum hasn't... <laughs> I hope, I for one, <laughs> I don't know about looking your parents in the eyes again. I don't think you'll be able to drink tea. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Shit, sorry. This will be hard for you to believe. I used to be a gentleman. I didn't used to talk about my sexual exploits, even with close friends. Never kiss and tell. Always just keep, you know, keep it private. It's private life for a reason. Private. Now, I'll talk about anything. <laughs> It's great for me because it's a catharsis, but also I think it's good for everyone because you talk about things, everyone feels a bit more open and a bit more normal because, you know, there's weird things. Here's an example of an intimate detail I don't mind sharing with you. My girlfriend can't have orgasms during intercourse, but it's not a problem because I can. <laughs> I gave my girlfriend an orgasm and she spat it back in my face. <laughs> I got into an argument with my girlfriend. She said, you treat this house like a hotel. I said, I have never snorted cocaine off a hooker's tits in this house. <laughs> I told my girlfriend the top she was wearing was too revealing. I said, Jimmy sometimes cries after sex.
we, uh, we go into a row. Uh, you'll be familiar with this. If you're in a long-term relationship, this is the kind of scenario for a row that I think happens a lot. We go into a fight on the way back from a party. So we went to this amazing party. It's about 2.30 in the morning. We're driving home. So I'm driving. I haven't had anything to drink. Stone cold sober, driving. She's had quite a lot to drink. I mean, in terms of units of alcohol, she's had an awful lot to drink. But she's not drunk. And I know she's not drunk. I know she isn't drunk because she told me she wasn't drunk. 400 fucking times. <laughs> You know, like sober people, don't. <laughs> anyway, the worst thing about this argument, I didn't even say anything. Someone else said something, and she was talking about that, and I just agreed with the fact that the other person said. And it was a fact. It wasn't a point for debate. It was a fact. So I was driving along, right? She's, she's talking a lot. I'm listening a little. <laughs> okay, my bad. But she's telling me about the evening in real time. <laughs> and I was there for most of it, so I don't need to be hearing this. <laughs> A lot of the stories involve me. <laughs> right, so we're driving along, she tells me this story, and she, she got to the point, she said, this, this mutual friend of ours, this girl that we both know, she said, that girl, that girl said my dress was short. I went, yeah, it is. <gasps> <laughs> You're taking her side. <laughs> Why don't you go back to the party? Why don't you drive her home? <laughs> it was short, I mean, it was a really short, it was what I would call a greyhound. <laughs> you call it a greyhound? It was just an inch away from the hair? <laughs> short skirt so like I, I went it is short yeah she went oh, you're taking her side when you go back to the party and drive her home then if you fancy her so much try to undermine me you saying I've got fat legs <laughs> suddenly fucking Chewbacca's in the car never <laughs> <laughs> fucking fancy me anymore you know the game what the fuck there's just snot and <laughs> Next thing I know, like within 20 seconds, she's pulling on the car door. We're doing 40 miles an hour, middle of nowhere, 2.30 in the morning. She's going, I'll walk home. I'll walk home, trying to open the car door. She's, open, she's not wearing a seatbelt because she's pissed. Opening the car door, safer. Um, <laughs> opening the car door, I just stop the car. Because it's dangerous, right? So as soon as I stop the car, she fucks off out immediately, teetering on heels up the road. No coat, no money, no keys, no idea where she's fucking going. <laughs> I walk home, I walk home, you don't even fucking care, I'll fucking walk home. I walk home, I walk home. <laughs> so I have to do the dutiful boyfriend thing of driving along at four fucking miles an hour. <laughs> Come on, get back in the car. It's all my fault. <laughs> it's not my fault, I've done fuck all here. <laughs> Come on, get back in the car, I'll buy you chips. <laughs> Please just get back in the car. Anyway, long story short, I got arrested for curb crawling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, but I think the best thing about a big, passionate argument is tumbling into bed together afterwards and lying in cold, grim silence until dawn. <laughs> Are you asleep? I can't sleep. I'm too full of hate. Any fans of makeup sex in? Anyone had good makeup sex? Give us a shout, yes? Yeah. Makeup sex is pretty awesome, but timing is critical. Because if you get overexcited and you go for the makeup sex too early and the argument's still happening, that is a little bit rapey. <laughs> I often get asked about heckles. That's a very common question for me. People want to know what's your favourite heckle, what's the worst heckle, that kind of thing. Um, I, I was doing a gig last year. Uh, on the Rapier Wit Tour, the, la the last tour, and uh, I was doing a joke about the Paralympics. Now, when you're doing a joke about the Paralympics, you've got to be a little bit careful when you're setting up a piece of material like that, that you're not fuck-witted, disrespectful. So I was set setting it up quite carefully. I'd got one sentence in. All I said was, my favourite event at the Paralympics. And this guy at the back of the room, quick as a fucking flash, went, Gripple jump! <laughs> LAUGHTER I wish I hadn't, but I fucking pissed myself. <laughs> The other one I loved, I was doing a gig last year in Cardiff, and uh, front and centre, this guy, front and centre where you're sitting there, madam, out of nowhere, 20 minutes into the gig, he just went... Dragon. <laughs> so there wasn't a massive pause before he said dragon, that was just to let you know what happened there. In my head, I had to go, whose coat is that jacket? <laughs> to get it started in my head. But 20 minutes in, he just went, dragon. <laughs> I went, what? He went, dragon. <laughs> I went, yeah, but what do you want? He went. I'd like a joke about a dragon, please. 
And he said it like I was the cunt for turning up in Wales without any dragon-based humour. <laughs> So in the, in the interval, I felt duty-bound to go and write a joke about a dragon. Do you want to hear my dragon joke? Yes. Okay. Two dragons walk into a pub. <laughs> Don't panic, John, it makes sense. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> oh, I love John. I'm just imagining a funeral cause, you know, what do they call it when the funeral, when the, all the cars? Procession, procession yeah, funeral procession with drum and bass. <laughs> Has your hearse got blue lights underneath it? <laughs> I think that'd be quite good, that would look like, like it was haunted. <laughs> <laughs> Two dragons walk into a bar, one says to the other, it's hot in here, the other one says, shut your mouth. Hello, I'm Jimmy Carr. Thanks for taking a break from the pornography to watch my YouTube channel. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. Now, back to jerking off.